Hello and welcome to London Fashion Week Autumn Winter 2014. My name is Brendan Courtney and I will be your host, no, your guide, actually your conduit for all things new and fabulous. Of course, we'll bring you all the major happenings straight off the catwalk, but this time we're going to get right under the skin of London Fashion Week and find out what makes it tick. We're going to hang out with a model, we're going to follow a fashion buyer, we're going to mop the brow of a fashion show producer and stalk the fashion editors. We're going to get up close and personal with the fashion designers while perusing their front row. We're going to meet the main events organisers while bringing you, in all its technicolour splendour, the sidewalk catwalk, which is the best of street style. Welcome to London Fashion Week. Let the walk off commence. Welcome to our enclosure. The BFC have very kindly set up a little studio which overlooks the entire courtyard of London Fashion Week. Right behind us is the tent where the shows are happening live. And over here, to my left, is the iconic entrance to Somerset House. And we can sit here, behind the glass, away from the rain, and observe the best of street style. And our beauty ying is out there, finding them for you. Hello, Propeller TV. Welcome to London Fashion Week. Hello, Propeller TV, and welcome to London Fashion Week. London Fashion Week is much more than catwalk show, fashion brand and celebrities. Some people don't have access to any of the shows, but they come to show off, to get attention. A TV drama choose these environments as a scene and families have a day out and come here to have fun. London Fashion Week is a big party. I like fashion. I, I've always loved it. Uh, I like the way fashion plays with culture and people and so that's why I'm here, yes. Even on a rainy day, you know. <laughs> I can't wait to go and see all the shows, obviously, but I just love the atmosphere and seeing uh, people watching and meeting new people. It's just it's quite an exciting electric atmosphere. Yeah. You look amazing. Thank what you. What are you wearing today? Um, it's mainly vintage and then Dr. Martens. Uh, and yeah, fur, a bit of fur from Topshop, and then yeah, the rest is vintage. Um, I'm basically wearing a black sweater from Uniqlo. Uh, I got my my kilt from Kilt of Scotland, and it, this is kind of what I normally wear anyway, so. Ah, great. I like your glasses. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Can you tell us what you're wearing today, because it's very unique, special, and you're gorgeous. Well, uh, I'm, I'm wearing, uh, this is a Miguelet, you know? Uh, the, 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 it's a very pretty Miguelet, vintage and uh, inside everything is uh, second hand, you know. Oh. This, this is a Dolce Gabbana and uh, these are all oh mine. And this was, these were the boots, they cost three pounds uh, in a second hand shop. These are, what are they? I don't know. I had to, to check. Oh, Jean-Paul Gaultier. Jean-Paul, <laughs> that's Jean-Paul. And now we're with the main event organizer, effectively. So, just for somebody from space who's never been to Fashion Week, when does yep. all the work start and, and how much effort goes into this whole event? 
Well, the work's non-stop. We're already thinking about what we're doing in a year's time at the moment. So by the time we get to London Fashion Week, it's really just about delivery. Uh, but you can imagine, it's looking at the content of the designers, uh, how we're presenting the schedule, what the space looks like, what the video content's going to look like, uh, how we're going to attract international audiences to be in London, to see the designers, to be buying their clothes. Um, and this is where it all pays off. So the months and months of hard work and planning uh, all come together here at London Fashion Week. You've come on leaps and bounds, haven't you? It's just grown and grown and grown and gone from strength to strength. It has. I think we are hugely competitive, probably like most in the fashion industry. It's all about what you can do best, who can be first to do it, how you can deliver it. Already we're thinking about what we can do better, what we can improve, what the experience will be like, as well as, of course, working throughout the year with the designers to make sure that their businesses are growing, are sustainable, that they know everything about production, marketing, branding, delivery, sales, uh, raising investment, which is what we were talking about this morning at the beginning of London Fashion Week. By its very nature, fashion has always been considered by the outside world sort of frivolous and not really an industry. But the statistics you were throwing around this morning, 26 billion? It is. The British fashion industry is worth 26 billion to our economy and that's gone up from 21 billion in 2009. So even through a period of economic crises, we've continued to go from strength to strength and we're seeing growth, which is absolutely incredible. And I think when you put it in those terms, people realise that it's not just about a pretty dress, it's actually about building businesses, building jobs and contributing to a country's economy. What is it about London that's different to New York? Milan, all the other ones are put together. What's, what gives London that head and shoulders? Well, I think it starts with our colleges. Is The colleges in London are by far the best globally. They are art colleges, they teach design as an art, and you can see that the creativity and innovation that come through the collections are here front and centre. Uh, the challenge that we've been working with over the past few years is how do you take that creativity and convert it into commerce? And we're seeing really great results. You see the likes of Christopher Kane, J.W. Anderson, Nicholas Kirkwood, Erdem, Roxander, Jonathan Saunders, Simone Rocher, uh, Jackie Lee. And these are really strong creative businesses that are building brands of the future. And the more brands we can build, uh, the stronger the British fashion industry is going to be. And you'd be crazy not to come. Thank you so I'd much. Say so. I'd say so. <laughs> Thank you, Caroline. This collection is actually based on the story from Pianis movie. So we start with Chopin and bring out the story from the refugee. But instead of focus on the military and the war, so we are more focused on the culture and the refugee themselves. So when the environment changing, they never change the character they are. So it could be something really delicate and expensive before, but now we just put it on to keep them alive. And they were probably painters pianist, musician, something else, but at the environment they got to put into fixing roles. So that's where the elements from the tool belts and uh, fixing into the garment part of the garment as well. I think Fashion Scott is really a great platform you know, for young uh, artists or young uh, fashion um, designers and that is just give us a chance to um, tell people how is our idea and how our work is.
I think the first uh, point that I focus on this one was because the movie, so you can see the main character in the movie, she, he was really focused, even the environment is really hard, even he has to find food, he has no time for food, he never changed and turning to someone that he is not. So I think the outfit, the elements represent, represent who you are, then that is the, like the big contrast of the masculine part inside of a character. So they are like steady and they are strong and no matter how the environment changes.
My name is Napsugar. Napsugar means sunshine in English. It's my first time ever in my life, uh, really. So it's, it's so we worked a lot to have this show at the end. I hope that it's it's working. Um, everybody's happy with it. The biggest challenge was organizing this show here. <laughs> From me organizing from Europe as to get all the props and all the scenery and, and all the communication, get ready in time was very difficult. Not the collection. We knew at, from the beginning that what we would like to have. So that was okay. Just the, the traveling from York, the, the giant props it was very funny. Uh, I'm very much of, a, of a, I love the techniques. Uh, I'm a very technical person, I'm, I want to see the details, so I'm the one who is uh, checking on all the little details of the, of the, of the zips, the shapes, the, the strings, the, the inside part, the layers, the, the quality and everything like that, so that, that part I'm enjoying the most. Draw a collection is, uh, if you have the idea, if you, if you know that what you want to follow, if you, know one, you, if you want to follow the, uh, you know, the, this, uh, contemporary cubism, the pop art and all the stories what you have behind, it's very easy to create a collection by hand, that's fine. But to, to get them alive is a very different story. So at the end I'm, I'm enjoying the, the laser cut and also the shapes and the styling. Yeah, yo. Look me up, I'll be a boss like George Steinburn. Shine earning when I rhyme, brothers bringing they burner. Others bring it absurd, a lot of nerve for a nerd. I got plans for the herd, spread my news with the word. Is your crew on the curb, legit loot for the birds? We get dollars, pound, yen, Swiss francs for a verse. And my skill allows me big banks without cursing. I give thanks to that being that created the world. From Union Turnpike to Turnpike Lane, I do the do on the dirt bike, my enemy slain. Now your crew feeling hurt like this life is a game. But your boy didn't work right for money and fame You on the streets doing business On record like the vintage book Life with the semi-automatics Not a good look Static some shook about Beef when we cook it up We dwelling on the meanest streets Hell when we look it up Streets doing business On record like the vintage book Life with the semi-automatics Not a good look Static some shook about Beef when we cook it up We dwelling on the meanest streets Hell when we look it up The jacket keys, extort your team, employing brothers for my fortune. I got your girl on strip, she's sucking on it often. A caution, y'all take losses while I be flossing. Talking, how your hot lights on a brother, I'm scorching. Walking, not riding, pulling honeys like a heist. I'm nice, I'm giving these bougie brothers advice. It isn't in your best interest to battle a smoker. Cabby slinger, brother, I linger on the hottest corner. You on the streets doing business, on record like the vintage book. Life with the semi automatics, not a good look. Static, 
some shook about Beef when we cook it up We dwelling on the meanest streets Hell when we're looking up Streets do a business On black it like the vintage book Life with the semi-automatics Not a good look Static some shook about Beef when we cook it up We dwelling on the meanest streets Hell when we're looking up Congratulations. Everything about it, I loved. How did it happen? Did you approach them? Did they approach you? What happened? No, I actually wasn't going to show this season. Mm -hmm. um, I was actually going to prepare myself for next season and have a selling collection that would run alongside my show because I, I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm financing myself and I'm not really doing it when I'm just doing my, you know, my creations on the catwalk. So I wanted to take time out to do that. I got contacted by 
Amnesty International and they asked me to uh, give a note to Pussy Riot and I was devastated because of all the shows to not be showing. I mean, because I make statements in, in my collections all the time. Because when I, when I was making the decision not to show, it was killing me because I knew that this was the time I should be doing it because I knew that the, the Russian Olympic Games were on, Fashion Week was coinciding, I thought what better time to really hit them with something. I couldn't not. Once they'd asked, I thought, I've got to. Three weeks. Three weeks. So what I thought was, okay, what I can do, if I if I design half, the, if I only do 20 outfits and 20 models, so there's no craziness backstage. I um, I realised that I had loads of pieces that were unfinished, and the fact that my work is um, it's not at all trend based, and it comes from me. Um, you know, it's not from uh, you know, don't do that kind of thing. It's it's just what I do. It's like it's like a series of paintings. So everything works together. It's like putting on an exhibition from this this year, this year. They, they work because it's it's mine. This is recycled. This one was actually in another in another show with a big veil down the front. Nice. So I took this one and I embellished it for my piece. This is this is the this is the part of the collection that is new. This was the dedication to Pussy Riot because. Um, well, it had, to, it had to be done. just thought, okay, trademark is, of course, the balaclava, but colour. So that was where I took my starting point. This is not for commercial gain. This is, I wasn't going to do a show. Anything that's got any, any, any um, direct link to Pussy Riot is not for sale. That was my, my, me saying, you can all go out there. You can embroider your own you know, jumpers. You can, you can, you, I printed the t-shirts. There's no profit there. They're to give away to people to wear, and then by them wearing them, they're being politically making a statement. So this is what it was all about. You know, but of course, I start and I start to, you know, and then, and then it builds up and it is actually a collection. You know what I mean? It but, it, but, at the, but at the start, it was just, I need to find, a way to bring people with a bigger voice. I can make a ripple. I, 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 I'm, I'm privileged enough to be given a platform to do my shows. Thanks to them for... Well, congratulations. Yeah. You totally nailed it. Thank On you. both levels. Did you know that there, half the stuff is pinned together? <laughs> <laughs>
your favorite part of the process? Oh, print. I love print. You know, and that's that's what my background is. So yeah, color and print. And and, and and that's an amazing brand achievement for print yeah. to see. You know? And that and that's yeah, that's how we can kind of how we can be identified. Yeah. But it was yeah. wonderful show. Thank you so much for this.
work for exchange because we're students, we study in France and we are here to study fashion management. So this coat is the SSQ and this is Topshop. My skirt uh, is from Guess and my shoe is also from Guess. Uh, for me, it's all Topshop and here it's yours. Have you been to London Fashion Week before? Yeah, last year. Last yeah. year. I'm in fashion industry, so yeah, okay. I'm going to be a designer, fashion student, working as freelance stylist. I'm wearing a, uh, a, a raincoat designed by Lula Mercedes um, with, with the green silk lining, and it's quite fun. Uh, yeah. which she designed for me. I've got a little, if you can see it, a little Lego ring that I oh, wear with my na cute. my that's nails that sort of match. We're wearing Very outfits nice. designed oh, by Christopher Rabin. So he sort of designed the outfits in a sort of partnership between him and American Express. And um, yeah, they're really like nice, practical, warm outfits. And it's fairly waterproof as well, so for the rain, because British weather, doesn't always hold up. It's pretty, pretty windy and rainy, but we're, but we're out here. Yeah, we're, yesterday, <laughs> yesterday was quite a challenge with yeah, the rain and British, everything in the wind, so we, but <laughs> we got through that. It was good. I can see you enjoy fashion very much. I think, you, exactly, it's a peacock's tail. You signal your peacock tail. What show have you seen so far? Uh, nice. No. no. No, okay, great. When did you start designing? What was the inspiration behind this particular collection? This started last summer when I was fishing in Iceland. And, you know, there's a magic moment between kind of daytime and nighttime. And I see a lot of beautiful texture in a dark forest. And that's why I created the collection based on that. And obviously, one of my favorite painters is too large, and the absorb about texture. But at the same time, it's a collection that we bring in the kind of dark color which is dark forest, dark red, and they're bright, and light. they need a bit of sunshine in the thick of that, but it's all about, you know, shape and form and texture. It's magnificent. So when you show at London, and you've been traditionally, your, your heart is in London and as a designer, you always show London Fashion Week. Why, why London for you? First of all, I trained in London as a fashion designer. And then from since the day one, in May, back in 1980, I've been selling in London. And I've been showing London since 1985, in 30 years. And the reason why is that, as a designer, if you want to, if you want your voice to be heard, you have to be picked one of the capital either London, Paris, New York and Milan. I spent three years in Paris uh, doing men's show, women's show and I didn't enjoy it. So that's why I come back to London and I feel very much a kind of spiritual part of myself now and always all my children in London as well. So it's very yeah, good. Well, congratulations. I won't keep you any more done. Thank yeah, you so much. Thank you. Thank you for coming.
about Fashion Week, we always think of designers, models, and celebrities. But there is a large group of people we often forget about. They are photographers. I shot uh, New York Fashion Week and then flew here um, to shoot and um, finished my runway shows, so um, I'm free now. So I came out here to just take some street style shots. I tend to look for either very classic um, looks or completely crazy. So I don't really do the in-between. I, I like the, the very classic, um, nice, you know, cuts and lines, um, even colors too, but then I also like the over the top as well, which I think everyone sort of enjoys. <laughs> A huge part of the way that I shoot is getting to know people as well, and I know, you know, street style, you can't actually form a, you know, a close relationship in a few minutes, but I think it's important to talk with the people before or after. And I think also, just with fashion, it's so important to really network and connect with people, and I think that's such a huge part of it. I think London really brings a, um, just a more diverse group of designers and artists and and I think um, I mean I think New York Fashion Week is wonderful um, as well I think it, it, London's just different from New York and so um, London has um, I feel like in some ways a more creative air in the way that the makeup is done and hair and um, the way that the shows are presented and so it's not one's not better than the other I just I think that they're just different in the way that they present themselves. <laughs> if London Fashion Week is a color, so <laughs> a color, okay. Like, what would that be for you? A color, orange, maybe. I shoot a lot of street style for clients and so I'm here to photograph all the well-dressed people as they come into the shows. For my personal style and uh, for my blog I specialise in menswear, so okay. particularly men. My personal taste is quite classic and simple, I like that the best, but um, for clients it's good to get a range and you really can get that range in London because of the number of people that come here. London in particular has a really international flavour and uh, there's always someone who dresses provocatively or a bit different from the other fashion weeks uh, like Paris and Milan which is a bit more standard in terms of fashion. If London Fashion Week is a colour, what would that be for you? Fuchsia pink I think. Uh, yeah, <laughs> a fuchsia pink because it's um, bold, unafraid, and makes a statement.
as I mentioned earlier, my collection with this lady here, Sonia Lennon of Lennon Courtney, showing for the first time here at the Fashion Week. And Sonia has been doing all the grafting while I've been running around doing all the filming. So Sonia, Wolfie Badger, it's our first time. How easy have they made it for you for us to be here? Uh, it's been amazing to be honest with you. The room was completely transformed. You got in here at 10 o'clock today and to see the kind of heaving atmosphere in there now, it's totally buzzing. There are serious media in there and a lot of buyers. So for us, it's hugely important. You see the other exhibitors in there in Wolf and Badger and see what's happening on the catwalks. There's a sort of a fearlessness to London um, that, that makes it very joyous, I think. You just have to look at the enthusiasm, the sort of unbridled sense of joy that there is in London. London is the innovation capital for fashion and, and that's all around us right now. Lennon Courtney is about you having the pieces that you need to create your own style. We're not telling you how to look, we're giving you the tools to, to make that own, your own decision, you know? So I think it's core pieces, it's, it's really quiet investment pieces, and then a few little dashes of madness to excite. I know the answer to this question, but uh, tell us, Sonia, what are you wearing today? Well, it's Lennon Courtney, of course. <laughs> His lead black show, isn't that amazing? Now, let's go and talk to the designer. Uh, last year, I went um, to an exhibition in Paris, and suddenly I found that they had the Dali exhibition. So then I was quite interested, went inside, and I don't know, it was quite shocking seeing so many interesting things that he did in his, during his work and his life. And I thought I had to take this concept and give an answer to Salvador Dali about what I have seen and experienced that day. And then finally this season I had the right answer for Dali and this is it. many nights, for me, I think the most important thing in this collection has been the shapes. The developing the shapes, I try to bring all of them together so then they look like a collection.